Now, this next sister um, that I just met, I just actually met, and I've heard amazing things about her, so it's actually quite a privilege to meet her. Um, and as you will see as I uh, go through her bio, her bio, Nikishi Taifa has served since 2002 as Senior Policy Analyst for the Open Society Institute and Open Society Policy Center, specializing in sentencing issues, prison reform, re-entry, juvenile justice, and law enforcement reform. She also convenes the Justice Roundtable, a broad network of advocacy groups advancing federal criminal justice policy reform in Washington. She served as an adjunct professor at Howard University School of Law for 10 years and is a founding director of the law school's Equal Justice Program from 95 to 2002. She also serves as a legislative counsel and primary spokesperson on criminal justice issues for the American Civil Liberties Union Washington office, policy counsel for the Women's Legal Defense Fund, staff attorney for the National Prison Project, and other network organizer for the Washington office on Africa. While in uh, private practice, she presented adult and juvenile clients and specialized in employment discrimination law. As a catalyst in raising the visibility of issues involving unequal justice, she has testified, written, and spoken extensively on issues of civil human rights and criminal and civil justice reform before the U.S. Congress and the United States Sentencing Commission, the District of Columbia City Council, and the American Bar Association Justice Kennedy Commission. She currently serves as a commissioner of the District of Columbia Commission on Human Rights and has served on boards and scores of public interest organizations. Receiving numerous awards for accomplishment in social justice, she received her JD from G G GW Law School and a BA from Howard University. She's one of us, y'all. Let's give her a round of applause. For teaching how you Thank how many folk here want some freedom? If that's you, say I do. I do. How many folk here want some freedom now, sooner rather than later? If that's you, say I do. Let me tell you this, you are in the right place at the right time. And brother, I really, really appreciate that, but let me tell you, that was the other bio. You know what I'm <laughs> that wasn't the people's bio. I didn't know that that's the one that you had. <laughs> you know, we all wear many different hats, and that's just so very interesting, because brother Chokwe, you're about to walk on the other side of the fence right here, but you know we all wear many hats. Okay, you should have heard the bio that said that I used to, I was a mentee of Brother Chokwe Lumumba who brought me to where I am right here, right now, today. You should have said that I sat at his feet and learned new African political science. It was because of him that inspired me to want to go into the law and go into freedom for political prisoners and prisoners of war. Wanted to have that so-called legitimacy, so-called JD behind my name, so that when I start talking about reparations, okay, that people will start listening to what I had to say. Do you know what I'm talking about? See, that's the bio we should have had over here, up here in there. That's the bio for those other people over there. You know what I'm talking about, the one that you had to give for, to give the thing that we were just not talking about. But, you know, but actually, that really brings me into uh, what I want to say just before I I um, uh, introduce my dear brother. And what I want to say is, y'all know the speech, okay, it's about Malcolm X, and he was talking about those um, two kinds of slaves, the house slave and the who? Field slave, field hand, whatever you want to call it. We're all familiar with that speech. Uh, house slave lived up there in the big house with who? Massa. With Massa. Oh, yes, in fact, he did. Now, it was actually up in the attic or down there in the basement. Um, basement, but he ate the same food as Massa, didn't he? Well, actually, it was a, a crumbs from the uh, table. Uh, Massa got sick, he said what, boss? We said. He said? Uh, Massa's house caught fire, he what? Prayed for wind. He prayed for that strong wind. He fought harder than Massa did to put out that fight. See, he was not working in his own interest. He was not being independent-minded. Now, there was a field slave, right? Mm -hmm. Malcolm said that he worked out on the field from what? From sunup to sundown. Can't see in the morning to what? Can't see at night. Lived in a shack, if that. Wore gunny sacks for clothes. When Master got sick, the field slave did what? He prayed that he wouldn't recover. Master's house caught fire, 
He what? He prayed for that strong wind. Well, Chuck Ray, I know you remember this because I got this right from you. Back then at a conference, National Conference of Black Lawyers in Mississippi. Or well, might have been Louisiana, I don't know, back then in the early 90s. But you told us, Chuck Ray, that there was another one out there in that plantation that Malcolm didn't talk much about. That other one, that other player out there on that plantation wasn't the house lady, wasn't the fields lady, it was the yard hand. Okay, you remember that, Brother Chuck Ray? I'd never heard that before. I don't know if you made that up or where you got it from. But it, let me tell you, it meant a lot to me because that person, that player out there in the plantation was very, very critical. You see, Chuck Ray told us that the yard hand came from the field, but he succeeded in getting away from it. Now the yard hand didn't live up there in the big house, but he didn't live too far away from it. Chuck Ray told us that he didn't live too far from the field either. He could hear the whip, okay? And he remembered what the sting of it felt like. The yard hand, Chuck Ray told us, could see what was happening up there in the big house. And he could see what was happening out there in the field, but because of his unique position, he often had a choice as to what his position was going to be. Was he going to work in the interest of his people, Brother John Way? Or was he going to work against those interests? And Chuck Way told us that that choice that the yard hand had yesterday is the same choice that you and I have up here today. You and I, you at that time, we were talking to a group of lawyers, particularly the choice that black professionals people have today. Are you gonna work against your interests of your people? Or are you gonna work to actively pursue justice? And Marone, you know, I would tell this story, I don't know if you remember this in the class, she was one of my um, students, you know, because law students, I would say they have a choice. And in fact, I encourage them, they want to go to the apex of the, 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 the highest height of the law firms that are out there. But they have to remember whose interests that they are working in, okay? And with those big checks that they're doing, they need to bring some money back there to the, to the struggle. And that's what Chokwe Lumumba's whole career has been about. His choice from his unique position to actively promote justice. 